What about the water resistance? Assuming 2% reagent at 85, after curing it has a 12 compressive strength. May plunging water during 24 hours, the strength goes down to 8. Dried, it goes back to 10. We do the same with a material set at 450 degrees C. The strength starts to 32, goes back to 21 in water, and goes down back in um, after drying to 28 in megapascal. The manufacturing of uh, the material is very easy. We start with the extraction of the material, crush, mix, let it store for at least two days, one or two days at room temperature, mold, compress, and let it dry either at 25 to 85 or at higher temperature. Well, this technology is capable of being the material for housing. The only question, and there is one question, do Africa, does Africa has the geopolymer reactions at its disposal? Do we have in our HKOH and solid silicates available? and at low cost, even if we are only using small amounts? And the answer is yes. Because Mother Nature has provided us with a lot of possibilities in producing this chemical very simply. In fact, this is the oldest chemical reaction that we find in archaeology. It is the oldest chemical reaction invented by mankind. It is the mix of sodium carbonate with lime that produces sodium hydroxide and calcium carbonate. We start with a salt that is called, called natrium we had lime, and we have different chemical possibilities depending on the salt that we have at our disposal. Either sodium carbonate, potassium carbonate, or sodium sulfate. They will end up either with sodium or potassium and the production of calcite or gypsum. So there is a multitude of chemical reactions that can be used in order to get the reaction to start. And it happens that we have these salts at our disposal in millions of tons. And here we have the, the country seen from uh, the uh, satellite. And we'll focus on a place that is called Lake Natron. Was well, it is called Lake Natron because it is full of sodium carbonate. This is a famous lake in Africa, at the border of Kenya uh, and Tanzania, where the uh, famous flamingos, pink flamingos, are breeding. And if we go further. Then we discover that, so this is the lake, this is the Rift Valley. We have another lake in Kenya up north. We have practically all in this region natural available chemicals that are called soda ash. And just south of the Lake Natron, a unicum, a volcano that is erupting sodium carbonate. 
the last <laughs> eruption happened 11,000 years ago. So that we have here at the old Donio Lenga volcano rocks, soils that are naturally impregnated of the chemicals we need to make the building material. We don't have to import anything, we just have to either use the water from the lake Natron and the soils from uh, the old Daniel Langai volcano and surroundings. So we have millions of tons at our disposal and I'm sure that there are other places. I know about this one because it is obvious that it is related to our project. So we have, we can propose two projects. The first one, the easiest one, is to start with the soils of the old Danio, add a small amount of lime, and we will get the bricks. Very easy to do. So it is easy to demonstrate that it works. We have done it in the lab with other types of soils from Africa, from Senegal, from Madagascar, from Ivory Coast, and we'll do it here with this one. Or we can have a more ambitious plan afterwards, a second stage. It happens that in all soils that contains this type of salts, alkali, carbonates, and so forth, there are plants that likes to grow in these soils. And these plants are known from archaeology from antiquity. And this technology of having alkali plants used in order to produce chemicals and chemistry was the basic of the European industry during the Middle Age and practically until the 19th century. Soda ash is called soda ash because it comes from the burning of these alkali plants that grow in soils that have a lot of sodium, maybe sodium chloride or sodium carbonate. And it is soda ash, we will have kali ash, pot ash, potassium ash. We are always relating to the ash of a plant that uh, gra uh, grows very friendly in uh, this environment. And it happens also that these uh, plants may be comestible. So we have agriculture, we burn, we produce energy, we get the chemistry, we make the bricks, and if you want high performance brick, you take the energy, but if you want energy as an energy, you use it. This is what is done in India with rice hulks. They are burning the, the waste of rice. This is the hard rice hulks. But instead of providing an alkali, we get a very reactive silicate. The rice, the ashes from the rice Hulls uh, contains more than 80% of a super reactive silicate that can be also added to our system in order to improve and to manufacture very efficient material. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.